Did you know that the largest railroad in America is entirely owned by Warren Buffett's Berkshire Hathaway? But why did Buffett pay nearly $40 billion to buy into a nearly 200-year-old industry? Well, for starters, there's not nearly as many railroads as you may think. In 1900, there were over 130 major railways. In the US today, it's about seven. In short, the industry has seen massive consolidation over the past century through acquisitions, mergers, and bankruptcies. The end result has been that the remaining railroads are some of the largest transportation corporations in America. In fact, Buffett's railroad has over 30,000 employees, about 30,000 miles of track. It covers about 28 states and owns over 8,000 locomotives. And you know what that sounds like to me? A massive amount of expensive overhead. And you'd think with all of the tracks and trains to maintain and with all those employees to pay for, the railroads would be a massive economic drain. After all, this is a relatively outdated industry that belongs in old Western films more than someone's modern investment portfolio, right? Well. Berkshire Hathaway's acquisition of the Burlington Northern and Santa Fe Railway in 2009 has actually turned out to be one of the greatest investments Buffett ever made. In fact, Buffett himself has even compared the railroad acquisition to Berkshire's stake in Apple as one of his most valuable assets. But what exactly makes them so valuable? Well, there is a secret strategy that Buffett uses when making investment decisions. He invests in companies that have what he likes to call a strong moat. No, not, not that kind. And if you look at the rest of Buffett's portfolio, you'll see that same story over and over again. Berkshire Hathaway's number one investment strategy is to pour money into companies that operate in industries where it is extremely difficult for competitors to emerge or even enter into the marketplace. For some industries, like railroads, those economic moats can come naturally. In fact, the railway's only competitor is the Union Pacific Railroad. And together, the two have a duopoly on all transcontinental freight rail lines west of the Mississippi River. But when looking at other businesses Buffett invests in, industries like transportation, banking, and telecommunications, they enjoy large economic moats in many cases because of extensive government lobbying in order to create new rules and regulations that effectively crowd out their competition. And it's the creation of economic moats that forms the core investment thesis Warren Buffett uses. And whenever government makes the cost of doing business in one industry more expensive or restricts the ability for new companies to enter the marketplace, they make the price of goods and services more expensive. And the lack of competition may be great for certain investors that understand how that system works, but the end result is that millions of other Americans are poorer off because of it and denied otherwise great economic opportunities.